welcome to uh, episode 51 of Dinner from the Dining Car. It's Sunday, November 21st, 2021. Now we are going to go a little bit off the rails today with something I haven't made in a while, but uh, Judy and I saw some boneless, skinless chicken breasts on sale, and so we decided we haven't had that in a while, so we're going to make it. This is my uh, pretzel crusted baked chicken on top of red velvet waffles. Now, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need, of course, boneless, skinless chicken breast. Don't be too shocked. These are vacuum sealed, so they look smaller than they actually are. You're going to need of course <laughs> pretzels now you're going to take quite a bit of these I'd say four to five ounces you're going to put them in a Ziploc bag and then you are going to beat the snot out of them to crush them or if you're you know if you really want them crushed stupid fine in fact too fine for the recipe in my opinion you can use a chopper or a food processor no, me, I just like to put them in a Ziploc bag and take out some violent tendencies, you know. Thinking of work, thinking of computers, thinking of some of my relatives. Anyway, you're also going to need olive oil. Because you're going to dip the uh, chicken breasts in olive oil, then into the crushed up pretzels and then once you get them out you're going to give them some salt and pepper sorry looking in the camera it kind of confused me there for a second that's all you need for the chicken then you're going to, you're going to preheat your oven to 350 and you're going to bake these maybe 375 400 for half an hour to 45 minutes. I'd go 45 minutes just to make sure that they're good and baked, especially if you have thicker chicken breasts. And now for the waffles, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need, of course, flour, sugar, baking powder, unsweetened cocoa powder. Now this is pretty much standard issue for Hershey's. Uh, I know Harrison if you're watching this right now you're getting a little giggle. He's using Hershey's. You're going to need butter. About three quarters of a stick. If you want your waffles a little butterier you just use the whole stick. You're going to need a little bit of vanilla. No, vanilla extract. Now, I don't use imitation. I go for the real deal. You're going to need some apple cider vinegar. And then finally, you're going to need red food coloring because the red velvet waffles are, you know, red. So you want to use a little food coloring on the dough. And uh, you are also going to need a waffle iron. Now I have a little a little electric one. Oh, one other thing. Two eggs. You need I don't have them out here on the table. You need two eggs for the batter mix. Anyway, again, waffle iron. I have, you know, a little electric. That's gonna work fine. Uh, but if you have, you know, the old school type, knock yourselves out. Anyway, that's it for this intro. This is everything you need for these. And uh, I guess we'll be back with you once we start the cooking. We'll see you then. Uh, okay, folks. We're back and ready to start cooking. Ah, well, you can't see most of my head, but I'm here. Our first step, and the most fun one, is to get several handfuls of your pretzels. Now you can use uh, pretzel sticks, pretzel rods, 
In this case, we got pretzel rings, you know, the twists, because it really doesn't matter, because you're going to pound the snot out of them anyway. Uh, I can get them down. Yeah, a little more. Just a little more. Yeah, this is kind of an eyeball one. Depends on how much, you know, how many chicken pieces you're doing, how much, uh, Put them in a Ziploc bag, and you grab the little buggers and a mallet. If you have a meat tenderizer, you can use that. This is my meat tenderizer. I decided instead of paying, I decided instead of paying twenty to thirty dollars for a little metal meat tenderizer, I'd go to an auto parts shop and buy a nice one pound rubber mallet and bring it home, wash it up real good because the result is the same and this was like seven bucks people think I'm crazy, well yes I am crazy I'm also cheap My wife and my family, they'll tell you. Except with my grandkids. That's a little different. And we'll flip it over, pound it up some more. I've been in the kitchen five minutes and the cat hasn't come in. Anyway, you want to get crunched into some pretty uh, tiny little pieces there. Pour it into a an old pie tin because once we get the uh, and then you take your olive oil, put it into another pie tin. Not much. So again, eyeball. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take the chicken breast. That's a good size chicken breast. Dump it in there. Swish it up and down. Just to coat it with olive oil. Now this is going to, the olive oil is there for two reasons. One, so the pretzels will stick. And two, so it doesn't dry out while it's baking. And you'll just push it down on the pretzels. Get pretty much coverage. Put it on your little tray for cooking. Maybe a little more dust on there. Now because you're dealing with chicken, you're going to have to wipe your hands a lot. You don't want to deal with a lot of raw chicken. And then you just take the second one, dip it in your olive oil, make sure it's good and covered. And get two, bang, into the pretzels. You kind of want to push it down so those pretzels kind of get shoved into the meat a little bit. As you can see, these are pretty good sized chicken breasts. Now this is going to really come out yummy, folks. And now, wash your hands with the chicken and the pretzels off. You just want to take a little salt and pepper. 
You don't need to worry about the other side. Pepper. Now there will be some salt from the pretzels also on your chicken, so if you're going to put additional salt on, go light. I went a little heavier on the pepper. And there you have it, ready for the oven. It's gorgeous. It's got lots of pretzels on it. Now we're going to make this in our turbo oven because it's a warm day here in Southern California today. It's in the 80s. And I do not want to heat up the whole kitchen with the pretzel stuff. So here's that in there. Now you just set it for about 375 and you're going to go 45 minutes. And that's going to come out and my god those chicken breasts are gigantic. Uh, better go a little more time. We're going to go like 50 minutes. So that's it for the chicken. That's all it needs. And we'll be back a little later after I clean up this mess. Warning, this can get messy because you get pretzel dust everywhere. So we'll be back in about uh, half an hour. I'll get the uh, waffle iron out, get it heated, and then we'll start making the waffles. We'll see you uh, in a little while. Okay folks, here we go. Now we're going to start the batter for the waffles. You're going to take two cups of flour. Now I have a fresh one open here little small one that I bought specifically for this recipe. We're going to grab a half, two cups of flour. Well, I'm using half cup because it gets into the container better. There's a half a cup. There's a whole cup. Cup and a half. Two cups. I move this bowl out of the way so you guys can see this better. Then you have your sugar. You need a quarter of a cup. teaspoon plus a teaspoon. Now for those of you who are in the math, that would be four teaspoons. Three teaspoons to the tablespoon. I'll tell you what, because I'm feeling a little math challenged right now. There's a tablespoon. And a teaspoon. That's it for your baking powder. Your cocoa. Oh boy, this one don't want to come up. Oh, you suck so much. How did you say that? Huh? Is the camera on? Yes. The audio? Yes. The uh, reason I'm talking like that about the cocoa 
is because it has this inner layer and I went to peel it back and it said, oh no, you want either. I'm just going to peel in half and let you suffer. So, okay, two tablespoons, cocoa powder. And you're, you're basically, you're mixing all the dry ingredients. And now, we need to get my whisks. Which I forgot to get out. Bad Tony, bad Tony. Forgot to get out his whisks. And you just whisk this all together. Just like this. And you're just going to set it aside for a bit. Because you have to, in another bowl, put the wet ingredients and then whisk it into this. Some what? Butter. Why? We're going to need it for the top. Uh, I've got a stick out here and I don't use all of it in the recipe, so oh. we're going to have some already melted butter, softened, and there's your dry ingredients all whisked together. Now, uh, buttermilk. You need a cup and three quarters. Ooh, I can smell that from here. Wow, that's good stuff. A cup. And about three quarters of a cup. Oops, that might be too much. For your information, if you don't know, do not buy your buttermilk too far in advance of when you're making this recipe. Because buttermilk has a tendency to age really fast and it does not age well. So that's just a little bit of advice. The butter, you need a third of a cup. Well, A spoon. Let's make a spoon so I can scoop some of the butter into the one third cup. And a little bit more. Oh, that'll do. It's not precise, but now see on a stick of butter, that'll be about two thirds of a stick of butter. And hopefully, you took the butter out and let it soften because you're going to have to whisk this around in just a minute. Two eggs! Okay, come on. My hands are a little floury and the eggs won't come out. One. Two, and I just slopped eggs on the table. Darn it. I hate when I do that. If, for your information, the uh, ah, waffle iron is heating. Now, if you have a waffle iron that has a temperature control, you want to crank it for this. If you just have an old standard one temperature uh, unit, then you're just going to have to deal with what you got. Okay, after the eggs comes two teaspoons of vanilla extract. These are going to be lovely waffles. I'm telling you folks, you're going to appreciate these. One, two, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. You're done with that. this stuff out of the way so everybody can see the bowl. Apple cider vinegar. You're going to need a half teaspoon. So this don't, doesn't take much of the 
Wow, that's apple cider vinegar, all right. And there's about a half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And now you need to grab a whisk and start uh, stirring this up before you put in the food coloring because you're going to kind of chop that butter up too. So you're going to whisk this pretty well. Kind of get the butter lumps out of it. Now see if I'd have been smart, I'd have put this butter in a bowl, stuck in the microwave for 15 to 20 seconds and just melted it. But no, I decided to do things the hard way today. You want to keep whisking it until all the lumps from the butter are gone. It may take a few. Okay. Now, the red food coloring, which is, of course, another one of these. difficult, if not impossible, to open packages. Oh, I definitely want to shoot somebody. Now you're going to use two tablespoons of red food coloring. Uh, if you have an allergy to red food coloring, like my granddaughter Allie, uh, you're not going to be able to get red velvet waffles. You'll just have to have regular waffles. There's one. There's two. And then you're going to whisk that in here too. That's going to turn a really nice red. Let me show you. That's going to turn into a really nice red. Then you're going to grab your dry ingredients and you're going to whisk this all into the... Try to get as much out of there as you can because there's good stuff in there. And you're going to whisk this together until it's a nice, smooth, almost lump-free batter. Oops. Trying not to spill it all on the table. Because that's bad. You don't want to waste any of this. What you have is a really nice... Wow, it's a little lumpy yet. I should have got up my mixer. I would have done this in a heartbeat. Oh, that's better. What you have is a really nice, thick waffle batter. Now, if you folks will give me just a second to reposition the camera over by the waffle maker, which, again, I hope you've preheated, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Okay, y'all, we've got everything mixed. The chicken has about 10 to 12 minutes left. And if I could get Judy to come over there and look at that chicken, it's huge. All right, waffle maker. Now, again, my waffle maker has a temperature control on it, so I cranked it. And this one, however, the recipe calls for half a cup of batter per side. This, if I put half a cup of batter in each one, will probably overflow. So I basically wing it with a third cup for each side. A little less, a little more. 
kind of even it out. And close her back up. Now that should take two to three minutes per waffle. Uh, tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and kill the camera for a while and uh, get some of these waffles cooked. If your oven has a warm setting, uh, set your oven warm setting on warm because as these waffles come out, you're going to put them in a pie tin and keep them warm in the oven on, on warm. So we'll be back when we get all the waffles made. Now, so if you'll notice, we're already getting over creep here. <sighs> Damn it. And uh, when we get all the waffles made, we'll be back and we'll show you plating it up. We'll be back then. Okay, folks, here we go. We're going to plate up. You take... One of your waffles, which have been staying in the heat. Now these chicken breasts are so damn large, you can get away with half a chicken breast on each plate. Because they're gigantic. Wow, the waffles are toasty. There we go. Another chunk of chicken breast, unless you'd like a little bigger chunk. No, that's plenty. That's plenty for you. Okay. And then you take your... Don't forget the butter. Oh, I forgot the butter on the waffles before I put the chicken on. Okay. You gotta put the butter on the waffles before you put the chicken on. Thank you for reminding me. See, this is why I keep Judy around. Everybody, this is one of the reasons you get married. Because you always forget one of those little silly things. And, wow, that chicken's hot. <laughs> and there's always somebody there who's sweet and lovable to remind you of the silly stuff you forgot. You can't, you can't go without... Now, this is real butter here, guys. This is a leftover stick from what we used to make the waffle batter. Make sure she's got plenty of it. Put her chicken back on top. And once you do that, you take your syrup and you just drizzle. Now, Judy was also nice enough to make us a cucumber and tomato salad eat with this. You don't need to see that on the screen. It's just cucumbers and tomatoes with some salad dressing. And there, folks, you have it. Pretzel crusted chicken with... Okay, not so much. There we go. Pretzel crusted chicken with red velvet waffles. I tasted some of the extra waffle batter. It's fabulous. Anyway, that's it for this week's recipe. Uh, to let you know now, with Thanksgiving being next weekend, we're going to be taking the next weekend off from making videos because our family get-together is on Saturday. And we will probably be eating a whole lot of leftovers. So, because of that, everyone, enjoy your Thanksgiving. If you cook this, enjoy it. Uh, as usual, if you'd be so kind as to hit the like button. And if you haven't, please subscribe. And if you have any comments, questions, copy of the recipe, or just to tell me off, write me at dinner from the dining car at yahoo.com and again we're taking next weekend off from videos so we will see you all when we see you have a good night